know one of the glorious things about living in America that they don't have in other parts of the world? Whenever you're ready. And action. Hello, Philadelphia. This is Dennis Payne with Kensington Community Television. I am sitting here today with Robert Jones. He is a street evangelist that preaches on the streets of Philadelphia. What is it like to be a street evangelist in Philadelphia? Well, it's not that hard, but it's exciting. It's adventurous. You meet different people all the time, and uh, you always have to rely on, I guess, I guess discernment. You know, when you're dealing with people, because everybody isn't the same. Right. Everybody's you got a diversity to themselves. Right. Right. What do you find out there on the street that keeps you coming out? Why are you out there? Well, for one, uh, we preach the gospel, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, and so we want everybody that we come in contact with to be saved. So our mission, basically, Jesus told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. So we go out with the expectancy that the Lord is going to save people, that's going to bring people into the kingdom of God. See, a lot of times we think that people don't want to hear about God. Right. They don't want to know about God, but we find that the more people we talk to, even the ones that seem extra tough. Or, the macho uh, ones. Right, right. The ones that seem like they live in the worst type of lives, even they're receptive to the Word of God. So that's what keeps us coming out there. I guess if we were meeting a lot of persecution and things like that. Resistance. Then, yeah, then you know we might be a little reluctant or people on the team might be uh, less loyal and faithful to the cause. But because people are receptive, that's not to say we don't meet no persecution or no rejection, but it's not like we get that on a wide and large scale. Have you ever seen any miracles take place, like major conversions or anything that on the corner while you're out there evangelizing? Oh yes, all the time. All the Such time. as? We're, we're constantly leading people to Christ. Uh, we pray for people. A um, couple occasions, people have been healed. Uh, one person that was blind in one eye, they were healed. Um, People who have like um, ailments or sicknesses in their body, mm -hmm. they reported healing on the spot. We talk about right we on the spot. About, right, we mm -hmm. call them up later right. on, and then they told us we right. talk about on the spot. So Immediate. God is still doing mm -hmm. what He was doing in the early days when Jesus Walked first here. ascended. Mm -hmm. You know, and after He left, and the disciples were doing great exploits, He's still doing the same thing today. We might not hear about them, you know, because they're not always somebody there documenting them. Right. Okay, but they are still happening. When you're out there on the corner evangelizing the individuals, laying on their hands and in, in, uh, in expectation on a healing, what is the reactions both to you and them? Well, you know, if they're instantly healed, they're going to be excited. Rejoicing. Rejoicing, you know, all of that. Now, if they're not instantly healed, they're not sorrowful or sad because we don't advocate that they're going to be instantly healed. Basically, mm -hmm. what we say is we'll pray for you and God is able to heal, to heal you. Mm -hmm. And so if he heals them on the spot, fine. If he doesn't heal them on the spot, still doesn't mean they're not healed. Right. So we can't turn around and say, there is no God because the healing didn't take place. That's right not away. evidence that there, he exists or not, is right. what you're saying. And we can't say that there was something wrong with the person, like too much sin in their life, or mm -hmm. they really don't believe, or their faith is messed up. Right. We can't say any of that either. Right. Because we don't know we that don't to be know. true. Right. Exactly. What we do is the Bible says that the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So we believe that when we pray, that what we pray for, that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, whether we see it now or we never see it, it's we still right, believe right. that... We received it. Exactly. We can't blame God for anything because we didn't see it when we wanted to see it right. in our time because we want what we want when we want it. Right. And God doesn't operate on that level. The name of our team 
is Lions of Salvation. We've been on the street, say, about two years now, officially on the street. That doesn't mean that we haven't been, you know, evangelizing in some other form, like passing out tracks and witnessing right. on our own, but we've been an actual team for about two years. Basically, the way we got started was that I went to help a pastor, a friend of mine, at his church, mm -hmm. and he wanted to know how he can build his church up, build a membership up. And the uh, first thing I noticed was that nobody was going out witnessing. And right. You can't, you know, you can't build a church without, without having new members come in. And the only way you get new members to come in is you get, somebody has to invite them. Mm -hmm. So from there, we decided to put together a team to go out and start inviting people to the church. Mm -hmm. So we would pass out tracks, and we started out at 69th and Market Street, and we dealt there for a couple of weeks. From there, as we continue to be out on the street, some people start falling off because they felt that wasn't for them. Right. And then, but as we were out there, the longer we were out there, more people from other congregations start seeing us that had a passion for witnessing and started talking to us and we invited them to join the team. So from there we kind of picked up people from various churches, various denominations. We started branching out now since we didn't have all of the original members from the church where we started. Mm -hmm. We began to branch out to other sections of the city. We're in South Philly, we're in Kensington, we're in West Philly. Uh, we've been to, in all of these locations, we've been to at least a dozen different locations. We've been abroad in Snyder, 21st and Reed, we've been abroad in Girard, 69th and Market, 60th and Market, 52nd and Market, 40th and Market, uh, 40th and Walnut, the college area mm -hmm. around in there. Um, we've been to Kensington and Allegheny, Kensington and Somerset, Margaret and Orthodox. So we pretty much get around the city. The main purpose, the vision that developed out of this, I should say, is that we were trying to encourage Christians and churches in those areas to start coming out. Mm -hmm. See, we were basically supposed to just go in, mm -hmm. witness, evangelize, because we pass tracts, we do personal one-on-one -on -one evangelism. Mm -hmm. And we also preach through the uh, bullhorn or the megaphones. And our goal was to get the other churches in that area to start coming out and taking over their own area. Give a little life back into the other congregations. Right, mm -hmm. and then we would move on to another area. God has those that have been, I guess, waiting for an opportunity to get out there but haven't found anybody to partner with. Right. So now we come along and you can partner with us. Our team is made up of uh, members from various churches, various denominations, various races. Mm -hmm. So we are, like have a multiplicity, okay? So our only requirement is that you're born again, mm -hmm. that you're saved. Of course, you have to have a passion because nobody without a passion is not going to come out in the street nope. and witness and evangelize anyway. Not everybody's called for that anyway as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, is that, is that like why you said uh, send them out in twos and threes? Uh, yes. Into the highways and the byways? That's, and you're calling all the ones together? Right, mm -hmm. exactly. All of those that uh, are like wandering or, or kind of dormant, right. waiting, and waiting and mm -hmm. nobody willing to go out with them mm -hmm. and they don't want to go out on their own. So you hear that, America? We're like an encouragement. Mm -hmm. and, and not only that, we try to tape what we're doing out there and get it on the internet so mm -hmm. that people can see it, not just in Philadelphia, right, but everywhere, but everywhere mm -hmm. so that they can light a spark underneath themselves and start going out because that's what Jesus wanted us to do. For like instance, you're standing at K&A, you're filming, you broadcast on the internet, and somebody in China sees it and is born again. Exactly. You, you experience a lot of that. Oh yeah. You get anybody not, coming. Not only that, we get ministers in other cities that uh, 
saw the videos and were inspired to form teams in their cities. Bingo. Not only that, we put together a street evangelism training manual that we offer for free over the internet. It's an ebook. Mm -hmm. It's like about 30 plus pages full of how to evangelize on the street. Mm -hmm. And we send it out to everybody that asks for it. What's the email for that? Uh, the email is lionsofsalvation at aol.com. And if you email us, we'll send it right out to you. We're also on Facebook, we're also on YouTube. So any way you can get to us and just ask for it, we'll send it right out. So far to date, we've sent 100 plus copies all over the United States and in other parts of the world. In Africa, they formed the team behind what we were doing, so we kind of mentoring them mm -hmm. right now. Every Sunday, they go out into the marketplaces and they preach over the bullhorn and they do one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. evangelism too. Uh, I get pastors that uh, let me know that they use the training manual to do seminars and workshops in their area. So you're getting positive feedback from your manuals? Oh yes, Good. oh yes. You know, aside from people getting saved, when we go into sections now, people will come up to us and say, we're glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, before then, maybe the drug dealers was running the area. Right. You know, maybe the prostitutes was running it or the, the drug addicts. And then we come in with the light. And that's not to say that they, they stop automatically because <laughs> we come nope. in there. But... It seems as though even the police like it when we're there because they don't try to shut us down or quiet us up. Right. Because apparently it helps the crime go down. You With know, you guys standing out there, like like you said, you were out there at Kenston and Somerset. I know for a fact when you guys are out there, a lot of people don't want to hear it. Right. You know, so they'll get off of the corner and go exactly. away until you go. Exactly. Yeah, I've seen that happen. We kind of think sometimes in the church that we should be avoiding them. <laughs> but in reality, when we come out and preach the word and when we come out to minister, they may be avoiding us. Mm -hmm. I've seen people coming down the street and they'll walk on the other side of the street so that they won't have to receive a track or they won't have to hear what we have to say. And that's okay because God said his word won't return void. So right. all we do is plant seeds. We're, we're a sower of seeds mm -hmm. and God gives the increase. We can't worry about whether the person is going to get saved on the spot. Mm -hmm. We can't worry about whether the word took root. Right. We can't worry about what they're going to do with the track when they walk away from us. Which most of them just... Well, surprisingly enough, they don't. Because we, we make our own tracks. Right. We print our own tracks. We write our own tracks according to the type of individuals that we come across. Right. You know. The type of tracks that we write and the type of tracks that we circulate, you can't find anywhere else. Are they available under that same email address as the um, event? If you write to the email address, we can send you to our website and you can uh, get the tracks there. You can download them mm -hmm. and then you can print them out and cut them for Is there a cost or a donation or are oh, they no, free? No, they're free. Okay. free. Pretty much everything we do Good. in street evangelism is free. Freely Jesus give. said, freely you yes. receive, <laughs> freely, freely give. give. Yes, you know, I, I like him. I can't see charging for the gospel. Mm -mm. You know, Jesus never charged nope. us for the gospel. He never charged us for salvation. And he paid the price. Right. And, and because he paid the price, we don't have to be charged. Okay. But only thing we have to do is give ourselves uh to be a living sacrifice mm -hmm. and give. It, it, that raised a question in my mind, okay? Traveling the country like I have, I've been to soup kitchens and shelters all over the place, mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, soup kitchens won't feed you until you sit through a half hour, hour church service. Now, okay. Jesus on the mount, you know, uh, didn't say, you gotta listen to me before I feed you. He fed okay. them first, and as he was feeding them, he preached. He didn't make them wait. What do, you, what do you think that about that? I mean, is that right? Or should they be continuing doing that? Or should they just feed them, then preach to them? I mean, what's your opinion well, on that? I think people have a short attention span. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we get what we want, we go. We get ours and we're gone. 
So I think the reason why they do it that way is so that the word will get in them, mm-hmm. and then they can eat, and then they can go. Because usually, if you came for the food, once you finish eating, or you're once go. you got your food, you're going to leave. Mm-hmm. You're not going to sit around after, if they say, well, we're getting ready to you know, minister the word mm-hmm. after the meal or during the meal. Now, during the meal is okay. Yeah, during the meal, I'm fine okay. with that. But if it's after the meal, you're going to find that the majority of the people that came for the meal will leave after the meal and mm-hmm. not wait to be ministered to. Mm-hmm. However, maybe it's, maybe it's uh, I don't know, maybe it's not all that expedient, I should say, mm-hmm. to have people just waiting around while you ministering, waiting, they waiting for the food because their mind is always going to be on, the, on food. the food. On the food. So they're not going to really be listening to you that well That's anyway. Right. Okay. So I would say if it were me or an organization I had, I would feed them and minister to them. Simultaneously. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because that way I can get two birds with one stone mm-hmm. instead of forcing something on them right. or giving them something and they leave. You know, I can give them this, you know, both at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the glorious things about living in America that they don't have in other parts of the world is the First Amendment right that we have. We have the freedom of speech. We can say what we want. We have the freedom of religion. We can practice our religion without persecution and problems. We have freedom of press that we can report on things that's going on freely. And we have the right to challenge our government. So if the government is wrong or out of pocket, we can speak up against it without worrying about them coming to shoot us down or persecute us in any kind of way. So in America, First Amendment is very important for our freedom protection.